Hi everyone, I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com and that is 2019-2020 Panini Mosaic Basketball Hobby Edition One Box Random Team Break Number 4 where one spot gets you three teams and it's on sale. It's pretty nice. There it is. Box of 2019-2020 Mosaic Basketball. A little Zion hunting. Maybe, maybe some John Morant. Big thanks to this crew here for getting into it. One spot gets you three, so let's triple you up. Two and three. So you can see Miles' last spot mojo star there three times. One, two, and three. Miles' last spot mojo, they say around these parts, 70% of the time hits 100% of the time. All 30 teams are in. Let's roll it. Let's randomize names and teams. Two and a five, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And final time. After seven, we've got a couple Joshes all the way down to a few Mileses. A few Miles. Two and a five, seven times for the teams. One, two, three. Four, five, six, and good luck. Seventh and final time. We've got the Miami Heat down to the Pacers. All right, Josh with the Heat and the Sixers. Ben with the Cavs. Josh with the Hornets. Ben with the Pelicans. Miles with the Bucks. Alifonso with the Knicks, Josh with the Mavs, Miles with the Hawks, Josh with the Bulls, Donald with the Kings, Miles with the Spurs, Donald with the Trailblazers, Miles with the Raptors and Rockets, Ben with the Jazz, Alifonso, you got my Lakers, and we've got the Grizzlies. Ben with the Celtics, Donald with the Wizards, Ben with the Suns and the Warriors, Miles Nuggets, Clippers, Thunder, Nets, Josh with the Orlando Magic, Miles with the T-Wolves, the Pistons, and the Pacers. Let's uh, alphabetize by team. And any trades? Going back to the refreshing my memory on the 2019 draft class, it was so long ago. Obviously, Zion and Ja were one and two respectively, but RJ Barrett has been looking pretty good recently. Same with DeAndre Hunter, I think. Darius Garland's all right. Jarrett Culver. Kobe White. Hachimura, Cam Reddish, Cam Johnson, PJ Washington, Tyler Hero. So there's there's some guys here. There's some guys. Matisse Tybel's in this class as well. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. All right, Donald's wondering if anyone wants Wizards, Trailblazers, or Kings. We'll keep the video rolling right here. I don't need to rewatch this Bulls Lakers game, which turned out to be not very good for my Lakers. Maybe a little Sports Center on the background here. Take down the volume a little bit here, too. No, we, we like Zion in this, this particular year. Donald would even trade one team or through all three teams for one team. Make him some offers. Make him some Godfather offers, offers that he can't refuse. All right, trade window going once. Trade window going twice. TWC trade window closed. All right, let's print and rip. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, 
I don't know. I, I think. I think uh, over the years, people have been burned enough by uh, by trades. I feel like a lot of people in our crew don't don't trade as often as maybe some other places. All right. Here is the here's the printout hot off the presses here on uh, Sunday the fifteenth. Have I been writing Sunday on all of these? Why did I write Sunday on all of this? What's going on, Joe? No, it's Monday. Come on, man. All right. Good luck. Thanks, everybody, for making this happen. Good late night rally. I appreciate it. All right, let's see what we got in here. I don't know. I think this draft class is pretty good, isn't it? 2019, 2020? I feel like there's a lot of upside in this draft class. I was just looking at it. I mean, outside of Zion and Jaw, right? But R.J. Barrett has been having a really great season this year. I feel like so has DeAndre Hunter's been playing better. Cam Reddish. Darius Garland. P.J. Washington. Your Cameron Johnson. You know, like, I, I feel like there's a lot of good names on here that can... That with a little more evolution. I was I was looking at something that I thought was really interesting, where where th there's a lot of like well nowadays remember a lot of players are uh, a lot of players are coming out of college after after a year or one and done you know what I mean. So before they probably play another two or three more years in college. Right, so now I think nowadays in this era, I think you have to kind of take these rookies and then you add like a few years, because there there could be a lot more opportunities for late bloomers than we've than we've seen in the past. Yeah, Jordan Poole's in this class; he's been playing pretty incredible, right? Yeah, so there there's a lot there's a lot going on here, a lot of upside. This is, this class has a lot to offer. There's Brooke Lopez. So, oh, I thought it was something else. There's Kevin Huter, 47 out of 99. There's NBA debut, John Morant. I don't know, but all it takes is a, is a few, just a few great rookies to, to keep to keep like a draft class afloat, you know what I mean? In terms of secondary market value and long-term in the hobby. If it's John Moran, RJ Barrett, and Jordan Poole or something like that, well, that, that's enough. You know, like I feel like, you know, there, there are a lot of draft classes where just one year, one player is carrying that, that class. Like maybe Giannis's class. Speaking of Tyler, like, see, Tyler Hero's a rookie in this. So the Kevin Huter goes to Miles in Atlanta. The Ja Morant NBA debut insert for um, Alifonso in Memphis, and Josh has the heat. And we got Danny Green, silver. And these red parallels, obviously everything ships, but just FYI, I'm, red parallels do not have numbers. I mean, people like Matisse Teibel. I don't know. I, I like this. I like the upside of this class. It's Dylan Windler. I mean, ask me again at the uh, at the end of the season, but. I like I like the upside here. I think now, a number of years later, from a number of years removed from this draft class, right, from nineteen to twenty twenty one. All right, so maybe give it another another season. You know, this might be your your buy low opportunity on this class before they really start to get into their own, their third or fourth year into the league.
these Giannis's or all these cards being flipped around fools me a little bit. Miles with the Bucks will get that silver MVPs insert, Giannis, along with the other ones. And there's a base John Morant. These cards are kind of, kind of uh, bowing a little bit, but those these top loaders should kind of straighten it out, like an Invisalign. The top loader is kind of not as clean as I want it to be. RJ Barrett for the Knicks. That'll be for Alefonso. And an NBA debut of RJ Barrett. You know, that's a good point. Joe saying Barrett, White, here a lot of these guys have dropped in value, even the Morant. I think the first year these come out, you know, they're always at... The, the peak hype, right? So they're always the price high. Then it dips and it balances out. It kind of plateaus out after the dip. And then I think, then you see where these players, and this is like years from now, you see where these players will start to start, start to separate. You know, and again, I, I wish I saved this somewhere, but I saw, I was like reading this article where, I don't know what the context of that article was. It was Dennis Schroeder. And there's Tyus Jones, 14 out of 49 from Memphis. Did I save it on my phone somewhere? I think, but I, I, I think like right now is the probably the best time to buy low on some of these, uh, on some of these players. Oh, you know what it was? It was this. I did save it. First round pick development by team. So the argument, the argument was, oh, nice stained glass Luca. I think the argument was, hey, rookies need a bunch of minutes. You know, like just let them play. Like they, they need these minutes. Was the is the argument? There's Josh Smith with Dallas, and I think the counter was that more minutes doesn't necessarily mean. That uh, that you that it's gonna mean that you're gonna be great. There's a lot of rookies that get a lot of minutes, but that doesn't necessarily translate into this. What I what I thought was more interesting was um, the years at which some of these rookies where they're where they're developing. Right here are rookies that didn't get a lot of minutes, right? But by year three and four, you're seeing that they're better than some of the rookies that did get a lot of minutes. So there's almost like where it's almost like some value that you could find here. Credit to that. But I think you can start thinking about value from for rookies four years out. Right? Maybe rookies that aren't getting a lot of minutes, but that, you know, out of college were good players. And then you start looking at, oh, man, they didn't get a lot of minutes year one, but that eh, quietly it's like this is kinda like Jordan Poole effect right here. Now they're quietly looking like they're going to be better than the rookies that initially got a ton of minutes. So, I mean, I think this discounts like a, like, you know, sort of superstars, you know what I mean? But I think that, I thought that was something interesting because you can kind of see four years out, you kind of really know, are, are they good? You know, where, where are they at? So that's why I'm always suggest because remember they're missing they're most of these kids are one and done they're like 18 19 they haven't, they haven't even grown to their bodies yet you know like you got to give some of these cl draft class some some players you'll know they're kind of busty right away but if there's like some mid tier players not busty players busty player mid tier players I think is really where you can find the most value the elite tier players we're always going to know who those are and those they'll always do well you know, in the secondary market, there'll be ups and downs, but in the long run, they'll always do pretty well in the secondary market. But I think when you kind of look at, you know, who are these players that aren't getting a lot of minutes, you know, but then, you know, but then you can see them projecting well in the future. That could be a really interesting way to, to collect. 
And with so many analytics that are in basketball, there's probably a way to sort of, there's Jordan Poole right there, maybe even sort of calculate that kind of stuff in a way just to give you a better idea on maybe who you should collect. So, um, I don't know. I thought that was very interesting, you know, where you're kind of giving maybe some of the, the second tier or mid-tier rookies, you know, maybe like a THT for the Lakers. That'll be for Alifonso. You know, we'll start to emerge. Yeah, and as, yeah, Joe, like if you don't think Clay Thompson is going to be who he is, what he was, and I mean, you you made a good point the other night where he probably won't, right, with all those injuries, then I know Jordan Poole prices are going up, but maybe you, you buy low on Jordan Poole. There's Eric Bledsoe. So a lot of opportunities here. <laughs> Glowbug saying, would love to be able to run a spread strategy where you can go short Zion and, and go long on John Morant. There's DeAndre Hunter. I feel like he's been putting up some better numbers. Him and Cam Reddish too, I think. Miles with the Hawks. And I think we're finally reaching our autograph. And it's going to be old school Walt Frazier, I think is our auto. It is. Does he do, doesn't he do TV or radio for for the Knicks? Alifonso with New York. All right, and the rest here. And there's Tremont Waters right there as well. There you go, boys and girls. Nothing too crazy in the way of, of Zion and John Morant, but I appreciate everybody getting into the action. Um, that was 2019-2020 Panini Mosaic Basketball, Hobby Edition, one box, random team break number four. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next basketball break. Bye-bye.